This video is brought to you by my awesome sponsors. Make sure to check out the affiliate links in the description below. Thanks again for all the support. Hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Matt and welcome to Forza Motorsports Update 4. Yes, it is the official January update for Forza Motorsport. And as much as we're going to be discussing a little bit about the update today, I wanted to discuss mainly more recent news that has come out about Forza Motorsport. So as many of you may recall, about a week or two ago, uh, two of the main competitive racing leagues for Forza Motorsport have released statements stating that they are no longer involved in competitive kind of uh, racing which is a little bit unfortunate but they do have some fairly solid reasoning and the reasons have been is because like the penalties are kind of all over the place the invisible car issue is a big problem and they just don't feel like that the game is just up to snuff and those are all very valid crit uh, critiques but I wanted to play a little bit of devil's advocate here today and part of some of these i'm not going to call them smear campaigns but just part of the general consensus is when that news was released there is a flurry of youtubers commenting on this in, in, information and saying forza motorsport is dying it's dead da, 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 da. the turn 10 is going to go bankrupt and part of their rants is that they would include a screenshot of the steam player base for Forza Motorsport and the graph would show like an all-time peak of less than 4,000 players since October and on average about 400 players and why I'm bringing all this up is because as much as I wanted to agree with these youtubers and their critiques yes there is a little bit of ways that turn 10 needs to go but the Steam usage, I, I'm getting the feeling that these YouTubers and these Steam users kind of feel like that they're the center of the universe. First and foremost, Forza Motorsport is a $70 game, and I think at one point was on sale for $55 bucks on Steam. Keep in mind, this is an Xbox exclusive, so that means Microsoft had turn 10 develop this game for guess what the xbox ecosystem and said yeah if you guys can also throw it on pc go for it but the majority of their manpower i guarantee you was gearing this towards the series s and series x and what is on that those consoles game pass with this economy where people can barely afford groceries, do you think that people are going to shell out $70 on a not very polished PC port of this game? No, they're not. They're going to play it on Game Pass. If they have an Xbox console, they're going to grab their controller and they're going to play it on Xbox like the game was meant to be. As much as I want to defend Turn 10... They're not ever going to release Game Pass numbers. I don't think they have access really to some of that, unless that is like really well. I imagine that they do. Just it's all under NDAs and that kind of stuff. That's all for their investors, so they know how well they're doing. So as much as I want to defend them, they're not going to come out and say, "Hey guys, well actually, the Steam user base is only." 0.5% of the player base but in all honesty they're not doing a really good job of defending themselves at all which is a problem they used to try saying with these monthly Forza updates prior to release how they're going to be more transparent and whatnot and they just haven't in defense of turn 10 let's take a look at the big picture here with the Forza Motorsport franchise for the very longest time they were running a single engine for this game dating back who knows how long and they had to do 
biannual releases of the motorsport franchise. And that was the way for a very long time until Ports of Motorsport 7, where they developed the game for a little while. And then about a year and a half afterwards, they said, you know, we're going to take a step back and we're going to retool this entire kind of franchise going forward. So we have more up to date kind of tools to work on it. Keep in mind, starting a brand new game from scratch is one thing, but to rework your game engine from scratch, I'd imagine that if they reworked the game itself, it'd be three to four years, but the, we're expecting them to release a brand new game and them stating that they're reworking their entire game engine of course it's gonna be a really long time like the fact that we got it even in six years was pushing it but then add covid to it add the fact that the entire world was shut down and everybody's like running around not knowing where they're supposed to be what they're supposed to be doing knowing that a lot of the developers had like really powerful PCs at the office that they couldn't bring home. I just, I don't know. So that really threw a wrench in a lot of things. And I guarantee you that we probably, if COVID didn't happen, we probably would have had this game, maybe not release coincide with the Xbox series launches. I know that was like the goal that they're going to have, but definitely by fall of 2021. So that's how much damage COVID itself did. Two years. So the fact that they're going to redo their whole game engine and make a brand new game from scratch in like four years. That's pretty crazy. And continuing forth, I feel like that with the whole gaming industry as a whole, I get the feeling that there is a extremely loud vocal minority that every time you do anything the like community is going to yell at you for not focusing on this or if you even tell them your full financials about why you did this versus that the community is still going to yell at you for not fixing this other one specific bug that affects just that one person and how they're going to tell all their friends to never buy your game again. It's exhausting. Just listening to all these entitled brats. Like, the actual criticisms get lost in people in their emotion, I feel. Because, I'll be honest, I was incredibly disappointed to see the game state of the PC port when I shelled out a hundred bucks for this game. Am I going to go on Twitter and I'm going to threaten the uh, developers over it? Absolutely not. That's... You can be disappointed. But don't be threatening, threatening people like that. That is just not okay. So even through all that noise, I'm glad to see this much. Instead of turn 10 continuing to turn on their blinders and just say we're just not going to listen to anybody they did release a statement addressing the community and saying a message to the community so with the statement turn 10 released notes stating that they're going to be addressing lo and behold the three biggest things that have been requested to be changed which is the race regulations the ai and the car progression. Now, when it comes to the car progression, obviously that needed to be addressed because in order to just upgrade your tires, you needed to reach car level 20. So you're driving on stock tires when the rest of your car is just absolutely modded the hell out on radials. So it's like, well, that doesn't make any sense. And the race regulations, I mean, it doesn't take 
it doesn't take some nuclear physicist to figure out that the race regulations needed to be addressed. Because you go to Reddit and you can say, you can see all sorts of videos of people saying, you know, I got rear-ended and I got a 10 second penalty. That's not cool. And then obviously the AI as well. Where they're no better than Motorsport 7. And to be honest, when all of you are sitting here going, well, what the hell did he spend six years on? They told you. They said they were going to work on retooling their game engine. The fact that they were releasing a Forza Motorsport game every other year just tells you how little they had to work on their game engine. If there was any big problems, they just had to keep moving forward. They had zero time to really address anything. The fact that they had any huge differences between games is crazy enough. So at the end of the day, I'm trying to provide kind of a realistic point of view. I understand that Turn 10 has a long way to go, but we have a game in front of us that we can play. I think the issue was is that because Turn 10 was silent for so long, I feel like that they could have provided better communication as to where they were in the development process because without information we let our expectations run wild we saw what Gran Turismo 7 did we've been seeing what iRacing has been doing we've been seeing what all these fantastic franchises have been up to so we had just hoped that turn 10 would give us the best racing game ever and they gave us a racing game but the worst part about it is i think what everybody's disappointed about m the most is that it's just kind of middle of the road it's trying to give sim racers something to work with but it's also trying to give a casual audience something to do and there's so many other games out there that are really good at either of those that it just makes this really awkward place to be for turn 10. So I don't know. At this point, I'm just kind of rambling. So uh, more or less, my thought is uh, comment down below what your guys' thought uh, is on this game. You know what you've enjoyed about it. Mainly, I want to hear what you guys have enjoyed about it. And of course, you know, if it's other than the car progression or the AI or the race regulation, I want to hear some other critiques, some more unusual critiques, because if we have an open dialogue, I think that's going to be more helpful than just saying, well, it's a bad game because it's not. I mean, it's an OK game. But it's only been out for three months. So when this day and age where games are being updated for years, we got a long way to go. So let's not let's not write off turn 10 already. So again, thanks so much for watching. If you enjoy this, make sure to like, comment and subscribe. And next week, more Gran Turismo 7. So stay tuned for, for that. Of course, thanks so much for watching. Hope you guys have a great day today. Take care. Bye.